Okay, so uh, a lot of people think God is quite in the biblical sense a guy sitting up on a cloud who controls uh, the universe, frankly, and has created all life. But uh, my definition of God is not like that. I don't believe God is a person or entity. Uh, God is just another form of energy. Well, actually is energy himself. Well, not even himself, itself. For the fact that um, you look at the Bible and other really, you know, awesome but extremely vague and unreliable unre sources in religion uh, that, you know, hold these sources that we find and facts that we find or so-called facts that we find and really a lot of people think it's just about faith um, but if you relate the Bible to quantum physics and apply most of the laws actually in a less of a figure se figurative sense but more of a literal sense and replace it with things like the universe uh, you'll, you'll eventually find out that it explains in-depth quantum physics quantum physics and astrophysics um, experiments and theories, well, maybe not theories because maybe now they're proven. Who knows, maybe the Bible isn't a story of something that happened on Earth, but maybe a story of how our universe began. For the fact that, honestly, I don't really buy into the literal biblical sense, like, you know, God is literally a guy who looks like us, who sits up in an alternate realm that's in our clouds and, you know, watches over all of us, but I guess you could say that he's an energy form that created all, is all, and is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. God, or energy, lives within us, through us, and can... And is us. And is us, frankly. So you said what, that God is the energy that is in us, created us, and is us. Is much, that yes. is that your definition? Yep. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Sort of, yeah. God is energy. That's my thing. And I mean, like, you look at dimensional theory, and eventually we have, you know, a singularity at the beginning of the universe that is energy. And then, you know, eventually that begins to slow down in vibration due to entropy or some other law of that sort. And then, you know, first you get photonic light, and then that slows down, and then we get matter, and then that slows down. And then who else knows what comes next? We have gravity, and then we have time, you know, all coming in at one sense. And I mean, does that sound like origin story to you? It kind of does a little bit to me. But, you know, maybe that's just a coincidence. Uh, maybe these philosophers or unreliable monks we call them that lived up in the mountains and wrote this weird book that doesn't have any factual evidence behind it maybe they were quantum physicists ahead of their time and maybe they're just trying to tell people you know who lived a crazy long time ago that there is an entire new quantum world out there but you know education wasn't too good back then so I guess they had to simplify intense quantum physics to something that a five-year-old can understand Thus, hey. the Bible right in certain parts of the Bible you can get literally if you convert the letters to numbers speak a little louder if you the uh, Fibonacci sequence if you invert of course um, but in certain important parts of the book, you'll take certain parts out and you'll get uh, numbers, which seem random, but they're actually frequencies of resonance that line up with what's called the Fibonacci spiral. And the Fibonacci spiral is kind of weird for the fact that it's called literally God's thumbprint. 